What's up, everybody? Good to see everybody here today in the morning. Uh, it is time to party. It's time to be back. I'm glad to be back uh, with you guys after a little bit of a break. Uh, as always, Andrew Escar, Legal Mindset. We teach you to be your own judge. Uh, and it's been a crazy weekend. It's been a crazy start of the week. And we'll be talking today about, yes, we'll be talking about the Sydney Watson evidence. And I'm very excited to get into that. Very passionate to get into that that ended up in my email box and nobody else has seen this. I don't believe this has really been done by any lawyers on the law tube. Uh, there's some people that covered the response, but not the evidence. So uh, we're gonna be getting into that. And uh, we're gonna start with the Trump arrest. Now, of course that's gonna be news and that's gonna be news everywhere. I think everyone's going to be covering Trump, gonna be covering the Trump arrest, gonna be covering this process. Um, and, and we're definitely going to jump right in to that. And if you guys have any other uh, articles and the other things you want me to cover, make sure you drop those in a comment, make sure you, or tag me in them on uh, Twitter, uh, send them over to me there or on email. You can send me Andrew Esquire live at gmail.com. Shoot me anything you want me to cover, like popcorn powers telling me about, uh, a, a lawsuit. I believe that lawsuit popcorn power. Uh, by the sorority against the transgender man. That one's actually really creepy. That one is this uh, transgender man who he, he essentially, he's a member of the sorority. He doesn't live in the house yet, but he wants to, but he hangs out at the house and waits outside of the showers. And he's like creepily smiling at the girls as they come out of the showers. Uh, and also he like is constantly asking them like what a vagina looks like, you know, how it feels, can he see it, you know, very, very, uh, well, let's just say weird behavior, right? So, of course, uh, given that and given the fact that he's like staring at the girls in the showers and the changing rooms and whatnot, uh, they sued. And honestly, I, I know this is really crazy. It's it's. You know, and I'm divided on this because part of it is, is, you know, do they get the W here and do they get justice and recompensation, you know, and you want them to happen. But on a broader scale, this is that giant fight between what's going to end up being this fight between the feminine and the feminists and certain bad faith tees. And that fight is coming. That fight is only broiling up. We haven't seen the end of this yet. I think it goes into um, and throughout women's sports. And I think that fight is going to be one that's going to really kick, I think, the left in America. Because it's dividing two separate groups that have separate interests, right? One group that wants female supremacy and another which says, well, I can be female if I just feel female. So... I'm female now. And that fight has not fully ramped up. I think I think there's like the opening shot, the opening salvos, but I think that hasn't really gotten to peak. You know, just picking on JK Rowling is not enough. It's going to go further than that. But I think this is going to red pill a lot of even feminists that say, hey, wait a second, maybe we went too far. Yeah, sucks he's creeping, good they sued, absolutely. Uh, but we'll see how this plays out. Uh, guys, I'm not guaranteeing that the women are going to win. In fact, I would say the women may very well lose. And can you imagine if sorority houses have to shut down across the United States because of the creeping? It's good. I mean, once again, these, these things are going to have ripple effects, which are going to you know, spread. <laughs> oh, God. All right. So good to see you guys in the chat. Just being just as degenerate ever. And by the way, what's up to people, whether you are on YouTube, there's 341 of you here. Make sure you smash the like button on the way in. Uh, and there are, let's see, a good number on locals. Good to see you all over here on locals. And the, the dirty does it on locals. And the folks over here on Rumble. Good to see y'all. Where you can freely curse at me in the chat on Rumble.
All the slurs are allowed there. Um, no, no, not eight. Well, did I say eight? I never said eight. Uh, Britt said he may be creepy, but they let him in. Twenty years, this would not happen. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing. They would never have allowed that in. And I think, like, by allowing that in, like you allowed that in. And frankly, that's the position of your sorority is to let this in. By the way, in case you're wondering what this means and what we're talking about, this is what we're talking about here. So this um, swamp thing in the back. This is uh, that's the that's the the lady, right there. I know you guys are gonna start simping. Don't simp too hard, okay? Don't simp too hard. Uh, and two hundred watts. Where's April Soju Girl? Coming soon. Coming soon. We'll have her up soon. Don't you worry. Appreciate y'all. But yeah, that's the that's the uh, the newest member uh, coming to a sorority near you. But that's what happens when your national platform, when your national sorority accepts, says, "Hey, we accept people regardless, you know, and as long as you identify that way, we accept you," and then you accept them. It's only the start. It is only the start. Yeah, people, people like people are worried now. Just you wait. Just you wait till everybody declares himself as a woman, including people that don't even bother to try to change physical appearance because that's not a requirement. We can all be women in that world. <laughs> all right. So speaking of women, let's talk about Alan Bragg, that giant pussy, and the Donald Trump arrest. Let's start with that. So first of all, I want to make one thing clear. Um, despite what anybody says, photographs and cameras were not allowed in the courtroom during the arraignment. So at this point, they were not allowed. And frankly, I do think that they're going to try to fight it for any trial proceedings. Now, I, I strongly am against that. I think that is horrible. I think this is an attempt to hide what is happening, to hide the railroading and hide the political persecution. So when you see articles like this, and, and this is just one of many, right? Don't mean to pick on the BBC, but it's a lot of them that say Donald Trump inside the courtroom. They don't actually have any in the courtroom photos. This is actually a lie. They have photos of him entering the courtroom and exiting the courtroom but there's no cameras allowed in photography allowed in the courtroom. Yes, guys, we're getting to blaze after this. I'm just doing Trump first, okay? So people asking, I'm getting to Sydney Watson. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Sydney's coming. So, this, yeah, this is an outside the courtroom photo here. And then, you know, you had him come in, plead not guilty. So Trump pled not guilty to all 24 felony charges. There was no handcuffing. There was no throwing him to the ground. There was no mug shot. Everyone knows who the fuck Donald Trump is. So all that stuff did not happen. He was processed, you know, in terms of the paperwork, but that's about it. Pled not guilty. So you see him here. Now, note the difference between that and this, right? Big difference. See, this is this is the difference between like reality and <laughs> what went on, right? So, of course, of course, the artists are gonna paint him looking like he's the fucking Grinch who stole Christmas. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Like, seriously, it looks like all the Who's in Whoville are, are shocked with Trump. But the reality of the fact is, is that this is just a way that they're portraying him because this is an absolutely a political prosecution. 
And by the way, welcome to all the new members. Uh, Joetta Bragg, welcome. And over the over the last in the interim between the last two shows, we also had the new members on Don Borvio and Sierra Tango. So welcome, Sierra Tango, Don Borvio, Joetta Bragg. Uh, welcome to either BLM or the RPG, the replay gang. And oh, shout out to my boy Ty Beard, the sexiest beard in all of upstate Texas. Uh, good job on the Disney bonds. Also, if they aren't munis, then they aren't tax free. Fraud and exposing investors to income tax and penalties. Also, bravo getting mentioned by Doom Cop. Yeah, thank you. And that was my whole point, by the way. Watch my video on the Disney bonds. You need public bonds equals tax free bonds. They're getting a big discount. By not paying taxes on those bonds, Disney was getting a discount for 60, 70 years now on these bonds. And they should have been paying taxes because they were they should have been taxable. They were private bonds. They were benefiting a private company. Disney admitted that. I think based on not just Iger's statement alone, but taken together with the actions of Disney, I think they should be brought up or those bonds should be examined. The IRS should look into that. They should be audited. The state of Florida should look into that. They should look into potential securities fraud for Walt Disney World because of the statements they're made. And certainly once they find those emails, they should certainly look into going after Reedy Creek, going after Disney for using Reedy Creek as an alter ego rather than a true government. And finally, it may be used as a true government now that it's out of their hands. So I, whoever thinks, by the way, all these Disney pixie dusters who they come along and they think that that Disney's, win, uh, Disney's winning here, they're not. They're not at all. So thank you, Ty. Appreciate you, brother. I got to have you on again, Ty. Uh, send me an email. I got to have you on again, brother. I miss you. Uh, what's happening with the murder with chopped body parts? Oh, the, um, uh, the Choi murder in Hong Kong. That one, I'll give you some updates on that. So here's what I'm going to do. My locals gave me a really good idea. I am going to do a world news update. In fact, I'm probably going to make this a weekly thing because I think it's good to do as a weekly thing, just a world news update where it's just global news. I'm over here in Korea, so I get different news than you guys on, when I see it through uh, television here or in the, the English papers here, the English periodicals, the articles that I get over here in Korea. So I'm going to do a world news update because there's a lot of shit that's been happening in the world with bricks. Uh, with the Saudi Iran deal with Japan and the oil cap, but I'm going to make that an entire show because there's so much stuff to go on there. So I will cover Abby Choi as part of that because that's kind of world news. It's Hong Kong. So I'll cover that for them. But thank you so much. Uh, and I've not forgotten about that one. And if that goes to trial, I will definitely go to Hong Kong and try to sit in on that one. That'd be hilarious. Sorry, let me get these two. Michael Malloy says, DeSantis's order his inspector general to open a criminal investigation this morning. Yes, because they're they're supposed to give up all their emails and all their documents. Uh, that's part of our sunshine laws and our transparency laws for governments. Reedy Creek is required to do that. They're not doing that. In fact, by the way, let me tell you a little secret. Uh, when I submitted a public records request, they actually denied information that I know they have. So I, I got the Disney agreements, the actual agreement itself. But they actually denied any other information. So what I am thinking is they are actively not turning over information right now. They're actively withholding information. So this is some bullshit. And I will, um, I'll be following up on the Reedy Creek stuff hard. And I'm going to be trying to get in contact with some folks uh, in Florida as well. Uh, and Douglas Fon says, who's drinking Bud Light tonight? Not America. Not America. I've seen more people pour out Bud Light than ever. And by the way, guys, remember that uh, Transheiser Bush actually has a family of beverages. So you should go ahead and if you're going to boycott Bud Light, you need to boycott the entire brand. That's the only way to effectively hit them. If you start drinking Stella, and let's, let's actually... So if you start drinking any of these brands, right? So let, let's let's go here. If you're gonna if you're going to boycott them, you need to boycott all of these brands to be effective. Bud, Bud Light, Kona, 
and by the way, some of these I liked. I actually liked Kona. Stella. I would drink Stella usually, right? That'd be okay. Uh, Hogarden. Presidente. That that one's actually really hard for me as well. So I'm going to boycott all of them though. Landshark. Bush. Natural Light. You got to Bush. You got to go all. You got to get with all of them. If you if you do any of these beers, you're still funding them. Just understand that. It's not effective unless you're doing it that way. Yes, Yingling is independent. So if you want to, you know, do like an independent beer, you know, something like a Yingling, or you go with a Guinness, if you want to go, uh, want to go crazy, or just drink alcohol. I mean, I don't drink beer really as often. I drink sometimes in Korea when I mix it with soju. It's called um, Somek. But I usually am drinking the the, the soju. Especially, especially when you guys are paying me to, I'm drinking the soju or the whiskey. I think, I think I've got like a drink of this Ballantine's in. I've got like a shot left of that. So that's up in there. Support America's oldest bre brewery by Yingling. Uh, Bud Light is disgusting. Isekai is life. Have a great stream. It's time to talk more anime since the new season is upon us. Yes. We do need to do our anime stream, Brandon. So I'll, I'll hit you up for that to do our We've Been Out stream. Uh, maybe we'll do it later in uh, in April. So we'll uh, we'll get up on that. But appreciate you and what you do for all those fucking weebs out there. Got to support our weebs. Snafu says, oh, yeah, got that one. Support Yingling. And Kyle Brogue says, I want Trump to lose this case. Hear me out. He loses and then wins the election from prison. Imagine the re- Here's the thing. I think that regardless of the case, I think Trump, from a PR standpoint, this is done more for Trump's campaign than anything else. And you know why? Because this is clear, cut, political persecution. If you guys didn't know, if you guys didn't know, the daughter of the judge worked for the Kamala Harris campaign if you did not know this we need to get this shit out there if you want to talk about a biased judge a daughter who not just worked for the campaign but currently works for an advertising company which supported biden harris so the judge judge merchant who by the way is the one who who railroaded alan weisselberg right so already this judge is already come after other folks surrounding Trump. But Merchant is a, himself is a lifelong Democrat, and his daughter is not just a Democrat, but a Democrat who worked for Kamala Harris. So if you go down here, you look at her, his daughter's LinkedIn, you see that she worked director of digital persuasion Kamala Harris for the people. And she now works for Authentic Campaigns. Authentic Campaigns at present. She works for them. She's the president and COO. Okay? So Authentic Campaigns had both Biden-Harris and Kamala Harris for the people as clients. And they're clearly not fans of Trump. So, I mean, this is just, the, I mean, the, the bullshittery involved in this is just going to strengthen the T-Dog. And, and, you know, that's the thing. When people come out with bullshit, it actually makes the point for us. And actually, this is a similarity between Alvin Bragg and Sidney Watson, our topic later today, actually very shortly once we... We wrap this up. I got a couple more things to show you on Trump. But the similarity between Trump and Sidney Watson is, or sorry, not Trump, Alvin Bragg, who's prosecuting Trump, and Sidney Watson, who's coming after the blaze, is their own bullshit actually makes the point, right? Like for all those that may have not liked Sidney and, and you know, say, oh, well, before this, before the lawsuit, we're calling her, oh, she's a fake, she's fake based. She's not really this, not really that. Uh, well, you didn't really have much to go on. You didn't really have her, you know, too much of her actions. You had some stuff, some statements she's made, right? The fact that she's from Australia, no offense, Australia, but Ozzy Overlord, shout out to you, brother. You know how your ladies are down there. 
And shout out to the Aussie Overlord raid. Appreciate y'all. But when Sydney decided to file that complaint, and when she decided to frame it entirely from an insane, crazed, anti-man feminist perspective, it exposed her, like Alan Bragg. When Alan Bragg decided to file this on the worst grounds ever, I mean, the shadiest legal basis ever, we exposed Alan Bragg as a political puppet, as a Muppet. And the fact that people who hate Trump are coming out of the woodwork to say this is bullshit. People who hate Trump. Let me bring in a walrus. And I know I know what you guys are thinking, okay? Okay, walruses are not are not really appropriate. But we we got to bring in a certain walrus on on a network which I would never watch. Right? And mind you, they bring in the limpest dicks in the west. But yet fucking John Bolton on CNN was able to break this down. L listen to this. Listen to what this guy who hates Donald Trump, who literally hates Donald Trump, has to say. For you, one big picture, what do you think of the indictment? Well, speaking as someone who very strongly does not want Donald Trump to get the Republican presidential nomination, I'm extraordinarily distressed by this document. I think this is even weaker than I feared it would be. Uh, and I, I think uh, it's it's easily subject to being dismissed or a, a, a quick acquittal for Trump. Just speaking, going back to the days when I represented Jim Buckley and Gene McCarthy and the constitutional challenge to the underlying federal statute here passed in 1974, I can say there is no basis in the statutory language to say. Sorry, I'm laughing when he mentions McCarthy. That You know you're old when you're mentioning fucking McCarthy. I mean, that's Jesus Christ. That Trump's behavior forms either a contribution or an expenditure under federal law, the two key definitions at issue here. Uh, if it did, it would mean that every single expenditure a candidate made could be taken to have uh, something to do with his campaign. Do I buy a $1 comb to comb my hair or a $10 comb to comb my hair? Uh, if, if you can construe the statute to cover this behavior, then I think it violates the First Amendment because you're deeply into territory that that uh, makes this statute absolutely, federal statute, too vague for enforcement. And as what I understood the district attorney to say that he thinks there's a New York election law involved here, all I can say is the Federal Election Campaign Act absolutely preempts any state or local law to the contrary. How could it be otherwise? You've got one law governing corporate finance in a presidential election at the federal level. You're going to have 50 state laws interfering with it. So he's just wrong on the applicability of the New York statute. Look, and, and this is, to me, that, like, listening to that was insane. Like, going and hearing that, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, that, that is insane. Like, that was the best thing. I mean, I hadn't heard anything on from CNN that I've ever liked in the last 10, 15 years. But I'm like, holy shit, this is actually right. And, and let me break down some of the concepts there. And, and by the way, I would agree with, I would fucking agree with John Bolton. Holy, I never thought I would say that in my life, that I would agree with John Bolton. Look at that. This is, this is why this is something that unites a party. Political prosecution is something that everybody's going to get behind because it triggers their us versus them thing. Because every single, every single Republican has to grab their nuts and has to say, if they come for them, if they come for Trump, they can come for me. And so now we got to, now we got to pull ranks. So even the cuck conservatives, even the never Trumpers have to get behind Trump because they could be next and they don't want to be on the chopping block. So even the cuck conservatives have to rally to the flag. And by the way, by the rally to the flag, I mean Trump's defense. This is why this is a bombshell. This is why this is beyond big. Yeah, th this is this part. I agree with Bolton. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about some. Actually, let me get these super chats and let me talk about the policies and some of the principles he talked about because I want to break those down for you. I want to law explain those a little bit to you. I, I understand. You know what I do, guys, and I realize this. I assume that you guys aren't stupid, 
but that's maybe a mistake. Maybe I need to, maybe I need to like really explain things. You know, I feel like sometimes when I listen to like rackets, I'm like rackets, you're, you're treating me like I'm dumb when you're explaining these things, but no, I, I, I have to, I have to explain things out. I have to go over everything. So I'll, I'll go over them. Turgo says, chat, beer drinkers, drink Yingling, oldest continuing brewery in the U.S., lager is delicious, and one owner got crap for liking Trump in 2016. That is a reason to go drink Yingling. Not a fan of regular soju, but grape soju, on the other hand, is bomb. So, Brandon, the, here's the thing. They only make flavored soju for you pussy foreigners. They do not sell that in Korea. Fun fact. You cannot buy it in Korea. It's not available. I mean, maybe if you go to the factory, you can buy it but they look at you dirty and probably spit on you. Nobody drinks that here. Uh, so I guess you're so Jew now. Ha ha, good one. I, I guess I have to cover for Joe. I need a yarmulke so I can cover for Joe while he's on Passover. Uh, let's be honest. Uh, she did not work that hard for the Kamala Harris campaign. Did not last that long. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. <laughs> Ozzy Overlet said, stuff that we disavow She's America's problem now. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. She's still your problem. Sydney Watson is still your problem so all right dumb dumbs here we go let's talk about some some let's do some uh yeah let's do some gaijin explaining yes so let's talk about preemption so that's one thing that bolton talked about so this is a basic concept preemption is a basic concept if there is a federal statute on point then the state statute is irrelevant and if there's an area in which the federal government controls the field, that will totally block out whatever at the state statute level is to the contrary. So in this case, elections is entirely dominated by the state. It's a field that in government has been repeatedly dominated by the state. The state cannot make any election law that is contrary to federal law. Therefore, if there is a New York statute that out that Bragg wants to try to pull out of his ass to get Trump, it's like, ha gotcha. That's not going to work. That's going to be unconstitutional. By the way, that'll go all the way up to the Supreme Court. So yeah, that this that trial could take a while. That trial could go far past even the election next year. Just because of that issue alone is there preemption even if they're able to get a conviction at the trial level. The appeal would be insane. Next, in terms of vagueness, he's entirely right. If they are examining every one of your personal expenses like that, first of all, every single politician is guilty. Can we even start with AOC, who was... Buying those cars, buying those Teslas, going on those trips to Miami. What was it? Her her mom's roof in Puerto Rico or whatever it was she was trying to collect money for. Every single politician is going to be on the hook here. Every single politician should be scrutinized. Democrat and Republican, by the way. So the the potential applicability there would be huge. And that would just open up the floodgates for a massive amount of political persecution. Pretty much everybody who runs for office could be sued. <laughs> yeah, and I know that AOC got her burner Twitter account exposed this weekend. That was hilarious. That was actually hilarious. <laughs> and I do believe there are severe, like you said, severe First Amendment, so that's freedom of speech. And that goes in terms of your ability to say what you want to say and also spend money where you want to spend it and also invest in the candidates you want to invest in. That's all linked to your freedom of speech, right? That's why corporations can give donations. Individuals can give donations. Groups, even super PACs can give donations. That's all based in First Amendment, right? So there's all those separate layers there. And of course, you have a void for vagueness because something is overly broad, overly vague. That's one reason why the Supreme Court, why courts commonly toss out statutes that are overly broad or overly vague, because they just can't be enforced. There's too many people that they'd be enforced against. So these are all strong challenges to the validity of the statute itself, the law itself, which Trump has at his disposal. Now, he may not be able to bring them up till appeal, because this is entirely under the control of these this political assassin judge and the Soros Muppet. 
but we'll get there eventually. And as we do, we will uh, we'll keep you updated. This is Legal Minds. You know we'll keep you updated. So that's where we're at. Now, one thing I want to say, guys, is before we jump into the Sydney stuff, do not get fooled by some of the, I know there's a lot of anti-Trump stuff, right? But don't get fooled by the pro-Trump stuff. And now I, I know that like, you know, look, AI is getting crazy. And the stuff I've seen on AI, let me just say, I can't unsee some of the pictures that I've seen generated with AI. Let me just say that. And we'll keep it PG-13 for the kids because, you know. But don't be fooled by the pro-Trump stuff either. This one got me. I will say this one here got me, this picture. This is 150% AI generated. But like the security guard looks like an alien, right? All kind of have messed up mouths, you know? So don't, don't fall for this stuff either. You know, don't repost it. Now just, you know, you can troll post it. That's fine if you're troll posting it. But don't fall for this as real because, like, obviously this isn't real either, right? It's hilarious. It is hilarious. I think this is actually hilarious. But it's clearly not real. The car does look good. The car looks good. Trump looks good. But everything else, all the people, they look real foobar. Like, <laughs> real foobar. Like, lizard people level. So, anyways. Just be very careful when you're going through stuff. Wait till you get the actual evidence. <laughs> People say that's real to me. <laughs> How we doing on, uh, oh, we got a tip on locals. Furious Flyer said a $2 tip. It said, will YouTube let me talk about Trump in the trial or will it be off limits like COVID topics? No, Furious Flyer, if you want to talk about Trump, that's fine. Trump is not banned yet. Yet. Maybe soon. Maybe the trial will be banned soon, but not yet. Right? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, and I know that there's like the InBev uh, family, which owns Anheuser-Busch. So somebody I actually sent over here is actually a good one. Uh, if anybody wants to do the true boycott, I guess you could do the, the, the InBev boycott. That is a fucking massive boycott. Which is, let me show you guys here. This is InBev. This is AB InBev. This is a Belgian company that owns all of these groups. So they own Diageo, which is Guinness, Killini, Harp, Smithwicks, Windhoek, Tusker, Carlsberg, Carlsberg, Cronenberg, Tetley's, Holstein, Tuberg, Heineken, Heineken, Beer Moretti, Tiger, Zwick, Tecate, Pauliner, Desperados, Dos Equis, Blue Moon. They own Molson Coors, so the whole Coors family. Keystone, Killian's, Krugel, then the Budweiser family we talked about, Landshark, then the Corona, Corona, Corona Extra, Stella, Hogarden, Lefe, Grolsch, Brahma, Bass, Modelo. So this is all the InBev family this is the parent company of Bud Light. If you don't drink beer, it's a hell of a lot easier. The, you know what? You know what is not on this list? Any whiskeys. There, there's zero whiskeys on that list. <laughs> also, my uh, my locals coming through with the memes. She will bang you, bro. <laughs> uh, locals always coming through. Appreciate y'all making me laugh in the morning. All right. So let's get into the evidence for Sidney Watson. Let's talk feminist Aussies. Feminist Aussie women. All right. So listen, and I I've I've been going hard in the paint on Sid because, well, I think that when you're continuing to represent yourself as a conservative voice, when you're continuing to represent yourself as a non-feminist, when you're continuing to uh, go out there and grift and keep up the grift uh, as this based creator. You're trying to put that out there and you've put out this complaint, which is your voice, which is your message, which is your words saying 
that you are a victim and that people should look to your victimhood and not just feel bad, but give you over a million dollars. Yeah, I'm going to hold you to task on that. And not just an individual, right? Not just Elijah Schaefer, but the blaze itself, because Elijah Schaefer, once again, is not part of this lawsuit. So today we're going to go through the evidence for, let's blow this up here, uh, the evidence for the Eliza Schaefer case. So we have the exhibits here in this case. Now, this is the actual document. You know, things just appear in my email nowadays, and I love it. By the way, if you guys want to ever have anything appear in my email in terms of evidence, feel free. But this uh, this is the evidence in the case of Sidney Watson versus the Blaze Media, civil action, 323-CV-00279-B in the Northern District of Texas in Dallas. So... Nobody has really gone over this before, so it's really new evidence that we are seeing. We're seeing a lot of the declaration. We're going to see some text, some signal chats. And we're going to see how they expose Sydney as a liar. How they take what Sydney said in her complaint and what she's been saying publicly, by the way, and expose her as a liar. So let's just jump right into it. And this was, of course, provided by the lawyers for, um, for provided by the lawyers for the Blaze, uh, Celeste Yeager and Jordan Kalman of Greenberg. I will and Littler. I will say though, it, to be honest though, about about uh, something. So I don't know Littler. So let me be very clear. I don't know Littler, but I actually turned down a job with Greenberg because they're fucking assholes. But they're they're effective assholes. So they're effective assholes. The guy before me, they made fun of his shoes. So I was I was doing an interview with them, and they're like, "Did you see the guy's shoes who just walked out there?" And I'm like, "Dude, that's some petty ass shit." And they were like sitting there dunking on the guy's like appearance for like ten minutes. And I'm like, "All right, well, like I'm here to talk about like you giving me a job." And they they gave me an offer too, but I said, "No, go fuck yourself." Also, they make you work an ungodly amount of hours. So anyways, exhibit one, right? This was served on Kurt Schlichter, right? Once again, and, and I know a lot of people are like, I like Kurt. I follow him on TV or I see his Twitter or whatever, right? And here's the thing. You can agree with people's general political views, right? But in this case, Sydney is using Kurt, is using a known conservative lawyer as cover, to paint herself as a true woman on the right, which she is anything but. So let's go down here to exhibit one. So the first thing we have is the declaration of Tyler Carden. Who the hell is Tyler Carden? Tyler Carden is the employee of Blaze Media as chief executive officer, CEO, right? So the CEO of blaze media actually let me get this a little bit a little bit bigger so you guys see it all right and you know saying hey blaze media is a for-profit company engaged in news and entertainment and i as ceo am familiar with the talent services agreement that it has with its independent contractors including the talent service agreement between the blaze and plaintiff cindy watson so here's the big issue with this case here's the huge issue they're independent contractors, not employees. Sydney is attempting to frame herself as an employee when she knows she was a contractor. She knows this was framed as a contractor agreement. She knows she had the level of control as a contractor. But let's be clear. Some women are never happy. Some women, no matter how much power you give them, they want more. They want, they want you, the man, or in this case, daddy corporation, to have all of the responsibility, but none of the authority. This is the problem with the feminist mindset. They want men to still bear in society at large. They want us to bear 
responsibility. They want us to bear the cost. They want us to shoulder the burdens of society while they just do jack shit. Well, we just, well, we just serve our queens. Society does not run like that. When you are separate, when you are a contractor, when you are independent, you're independent, lady. That means you're doing your own thing, Sid. You're not an employee. You can't come back and say, oh, no, 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 I want to be an employee. Okay, well, if you're an employee, you do what the fuck we tell you to do when we tell you to do it. You cannot have it both ways. And Ty, someone can be awesome and their political points can be great, but, but he's wrong on this one, brother. He is dead wrong on this one. So Sean George says, uh, I'm good on the boycott by default since I drink in. Okay, great. Shinerbach, Zeigenbach, and Yingling are great beers, but grow some chest hair and pour you a glass of good old Tennessee whiskey. Cheers. Yeah, cheers, guys. Cheers. So Miss, Bl we're going to continue with this here, about the contractor agreement. So once again, we're talking about her agreement to be independent. So they entered into the talent services agreement, the TSA. It's pretty much a consulting agreement, which is attached. So we're going to get a copy of that. Now, it's going to be heavily redacted. But we're also getting here, as Exhibit C, a copy of a text message between Miss Watson and the CEO on December 4th, 2021. So Miss Watson told me that she would usually say no right out of the gate when she thought a proposed guest idea was bad and she let the Nick thing slide. She added, "They are. she is glad they did it to an extent. And she said, I could trust that she was making hardcore vetoes whenever she felt a proper guest was a bad fit. So remember, Sid was bitching about Nick Fuentes, cat boy lover Nick Fuentes. And look, you know, no love lost there with Nick, but she seems to have been okay with it. And frankly, she wanted controversial guests. Sydney knows that controversy gets clicks. Controversy is what gets people in. So you bring in the controversial guest and you argue, by the way, this Nick thing is Nick Fuentes. This is not Nick Ricada. This is not rackets that they're speaking about. This is Nick Fuentes. So this Nick is not Nick Ricada. This is Nick Fuentes. <laughs> she didn't say no's, right? She didn't say no's. And actually, at this point, she hadn't had Ricada on yet. Fuentes was on before Nick. So Fuentes appeared on You Are Here. Uh, Miss Watson answered a viewer question during September 15, 2021 episode of the show in regards to Mitra Fuentes, uh, whether Mitra Fuentes would be appearing. Miss Watson stated, I disagree with a bunch of his stances, but Miss Watson was not anti-platforming people. And Miss Watson does not care because you interrogate ideas. And if it's a bad idea, you use a better idea to beat it. I don't understand. I'm fine with that. Okay. Right here, guys. How many conservative based women have you heard say this exact same thing? How many out there, guys? How many conservative? I want to know. Based content creators, right? They call themselves based. They call themselves conservative. They call themselves red pill. Maybe they're even like, you know, out there doing semi manosphere type stuff. Maybe they're the pearls of the world or, you know, whatever else to the folks out there that are doing red pill content or manosphere content or whatever else, you know, based content. And they say this, they say, I'm not against deep platforming. They say, I'm for good ideas, fighting it out. I'm for discussing it. But here's what happens, and here's the truth, is that every single one of these creators, when they're pushed on a sensitive issue, something that gets in their feelings, they all bend and they all show their true colors. Every single one of these content creators, if you push them, they're going to show their true colors. They're going to show exactly what they are. Very few. There's very few. That are like that. I mean, it, it, it's very rare you can get ones that stick by it. 
And it's typically the ones that have something else going for them. Like, for example, you know, if you're, let's say, a, a mom, you know, and you put out content on the side, right? But you don't consider yourself a primary content creator, right? You consider yourself perhaps a mother first and a content creator second. I've seen good people like that or people out there that, hey, look, they're part of a, a greater, you know, structure or movement, but especially these solo content creators, solo single female content creators, the Tommy Laren's of the world, literally, by the way, Tommy Laren, who she compared herself to in the complaint. I, I just, I... I automatically press X to doubt with all of them. I'm sorry. That's my that's my point. People call misogyny. Don't care. All right. Continuing here. It was the plaintiff. It was literally Sydney Watson who added Mr. Murphy's name and contact information of a list of to a list of guests to book for the producer to arrange for you are here and Mr. Murphy to come on the show. Sydney was the one who invited in Jack Murphy. Who who let that happen? The thing she the thing she is complaining most about she ended up doing. She created an entire line based on the episode featuring his appearance, which, by the way, the heartfelt line is still up as of today on her website. You can go to sydneywatson.com and get your heartfelt merch. Mr. Murphy said, fuck you, heartfelt. Plaintiff then created designs for sweatshirts, hoodies, t-shirts, and coffee mugs with heartfelt, which are currently offered with a picture of a chicken, perhaps a clucker, perhaps which binds with cuck. She's still selling them. You do not get to profit and also try to say that, oh, that hurt my feelings so bad. I need you need to pay me money. You don't get to do both things. You have to pick a lane, woman. Either be so hurt by it that you could never sell merch, right? That would be that would be so problematic for you as a woman, as a woman, or just sell the merch and don't sue. Because you're making money off of that. And I guarantee you, by the way, Sydney Watson's probably made in the in the definitely in the six figures off the merch. I guarantee she's made six figures off the merch. But that's not enough for Sid. She's got high, she's got high standards. She's a she's a high roller. Those trips to Australia are expensive. You know, you got to ride on the back of a, a dingo to get there. So, you know, it's hard. It's really hard. So you get, we're going to get copies of the text messages, signal chats, text messages saying that she had some great ideas for the show, other tweets. This is preface before we get into it, but you need to have these as a required. But here, continuing here, a declaration that Miss Watson and her co-host and his wife were, by the way, that's Elijah, who's not party to the suit, were friends outside of work long before Miss Watson agreed to co-host as an independent contractor. They had a falling out in their personal relationship when, uh-oh, here it is, here it is, Mr. Schaefer and his wife did not like Sidney Watson's boyfriend. Uh-oh, that's what it was there. You see, that's what it really is. That's the type of shit that really causes problems. You really, this is the, this is the facts here. This is the juice. This is where you really get to it. There's some personal reason and she just did it, and they were fighting over the boyfriend, and you know how that gets, especially when you're getting that new D. And guys, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a pro tip. This is a pro tip, guys. Never try to convince a woman that her new boyfriend is bad for. Her. This is for guys, gals, everybody in between. There's a certain period in the beginning when they first start dating somebody, that honeymoon period, where nothing you say is gonna convince them that guy is bad for him. You got to wait at least six months, possibly a year, and then you have that conversation. But you cannot have that conversation in the first couple months. And that's where most people fucked up. And it looks like that's exactly what happened here. Now, I want to figure, I don't know who her boyfriend is. 
Now I want to figure out who her boyfriend is. But I don't know. So let me just say, I don't personally know this. But that being said, this is absolutely the real reason why there was a falling out. Not the penis jokes. It wasn't the penis jokes. It was, it was this. This is the real reason. Digital Cannibal, we forgive you guys. It's okay. Look, and by the way, let me say this too. There's some really cool women out there and a lot of people in the chat, but a lot of y'all that are in the chat and that like are following along and the women that ladies that get it, you guys get it and you guys are just living the life, right? You don't feel the need to go out and create content. And I think that's the one thing that's kind of the paradox of the traditional woman is that the traditional woman wouldn't be dedicating her life to creating content. That That's not what I believe a traditional woman will be doing. So it's kind of a paradox. Like you don't see it because they're not, wouldn't be doing the thing, right? Like if you are the thing, you're not doing the thing. So da, 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 da. it's, that, that's so the whole thing is Sydney Watson, a traditional conservative. And I would say no, because she's neither traditional nor conservative. JM says Con Inc. infighting turned out to be benefit both parties for subs. Good chance Sydney Watson was just looking for some of that boost. Fair chance blazes in on it. Hey, it's possible. But you know what? <laughs> you know what? They're helping me out too. And look, I'll call her out all day and all night. And this is exposing the truth. And a lot of people are waking up about Sydney. And a lot of people uh, are seeing my videos. Tons of people are commenting that, hey, I'm seeing this stuff about Sydney and I'm waking up and I'm, I'm out, you know? I'm getting red pilled on Sid. And by the way, I've said this just because she's a rabid feminist doesn't mean that she hasn't had, you know, she's internalized that feminism, that that's deeply rooted within her, that she hasn't said things and made statements that you can occasionally agree with. She's made statements that I'm like, yeah, I agree with that. But does she deeply believe that? Does she actually believe that when you test it? And that's what we're finding out in this lawsuit. She doesn't genuinely believe that. Just like politicians say things they don't believe, they don't actually believe. Sydney Watson clearly doesn't believe the things she says. I agree with the point itself sometimes, but I don't believe she actually gets behind it. Miss Watson informed me she no longer wanted to co-host You Are Here. She said it was because she no longer trusted her co-host and no longer wanted to be associated with him or YAH. She emphasized that her frustrations related only to her co-host and further added that she enjoyed working with everybody else at the network. And hold on, the, the thing is glitching. There you go, a little bit. So she enjoyed everybody else, right? She had no problems with everybody else. Blaze then offered her an opportunity to come continue to work by developing another show for her to host alone or with a different co-host. She agreed, and she took some time off to discuss the other project. She then put, you are here on hiatus, continued to pay Blaze for her fee while they discussed ideas and concepts. And they did not learn until they received a demand letter in August, August 12, 2022. So she didn't bring any of this up till they got served a complaint, which, by the way, is what happens often. And by the way, I know that the the Overton window in Australia is different. You guys are shifted, so like your mod, like your conservatives in Australia are our moderate leftists, and in, in like conservatives in Australia would be Democrats in America. They'd be like the moderate Democrat. That's your conservative in Australia. I I understand that. That's similar for Canada. Like the the sort of like. Blue dog Democrat is about as right as it goes. I mean, you if you're if you're Viva level or you're like, you know, on the People's Party level, you're probably getting out of Canada. You're probably doing the Viva and you're just going to Florida. You're getting out. You're like moving out. A lot of the guys I know are getting out of Canada. By the way, if you want to get out of Canada and go to Asia, check out my channel, Go East Gentlemen. I have some good information there. And I just did a bunch of consultations. I have a, a couple booked and did a couple with Canadians trying to get out of Canada. So that is... That is happening sooner and sooner. So let's get into the exhibits. Let's get into the evidence, what the people are here for. Now, this piece of evidence is the agreement. Now, I will say 
just so you know, we're not actually going to see much in this agreement because a lot of it is redacted. But one important thing here is the arbitration clause. And I know that other attorneys have spent a lot of time on this, and I don't want to belabor this too much. But the arbitration clause is really key here because arbitration clauses are presumptively enforceable. And here we have it in the agreement, the arbitration clause. This is presumptively enforceable until it's rebutted. So there is a presumption in favor of arbitration until Sidney Watson comes out and says and is able to get past that evidentiary hurdle to prove that arbitration is not justified. Now, I know a lot of people feel different ways about arbitration, right? Some people think arbitration is horrible. Some people think it's great. And that's, that's a, I think, a debate for another day. Perhaps Joe and I could have that debate when he's back because I think Joe would be great to debate with that because there's, there's, there's pros and cons. So on one side with arbitration, it's cheaper, it costs everybody less money, it's quicker, and the people that are on the arbitration board presumptively are experts in that field so they know that area of law very well flip that to a judge. A judge may only generally know that area. And a jury, certainly none of those people are experts. They're just regular old folk that might feel a certain way. So arbitration is supposed to be facts over feelings. Now, the con is people say, well, they're all in the tank for industry. Industry's the one footing the bill. So they kind of they kind of know they have to bend the knee to industry a little bit. They do tend to have more industry favorable outcomes. However, they do generate uh, some sizable returns in certain cases. So there's pros and cons to arbitration. We could debate that. And we could say, look, they're for corporate benefit. But the law on the books, whether we like it or not, is that arbitration is presumptively the thing we got to go with here. And yes, I've been, a, I was in house counsel. I was a corporate attorney and we always wanted to bring everything to arbitration. We never wanted things to go to trial. Of course it's cheaper, it's cheaper for everybody. If it's going to trial, we're, we're looking at the cost benefit of just settling it for nuisance value and just saying, Hey, here's five grand. Here's 10 grand. Go the fuck away. So if it's if it's between arbitrating something and really getting to the merits and maybe having a slight bias versus just settling it for nuisance value, well, I think arbitration is better than settling it for nuisance value. But based on a full case on the merits, yeah, that'd be better. But the problem is it's so damn expensive. We could get the cost down for trial. That would be fantastic. The problem is lawyers cost way too much money. Now, AI may fix that. But for now, lawyers cost way too much money. By the way, all the lawyers that think they don't have to worry about AI, I, I think that's they're they're just boomers who aren't who aren't understanding where it's gonna go. It it's coming. And like Ty says right here, if arbitration is agreed to in the contract, it's binding. And Sid signed this contract. So this is something that was signed by Sidney Watson. Um, so it's binding. Also, another part of this was confidentiality and public statements. So Sidney Watson breached the clause regarding confidentiality and public statements by not disclosing this to the blaze. So once again, you've got, you've got multiple issues here tied into the talent services agreement, which I think are serious issues. But I think we can we can go into that. We can debate that later. But you see her signatures here. Talent services agreement, DocuSign. So she did this digitally, right? Let me zoom in here. She did this digitally. Signed by Sydney Watson. This is such a DocuSign signature, by the way. But this is valid and this will hold up in court. 
And yeah, it, especially in terms of legal research, it's coming. Like all the form documents you see, like the form documents you see on legal zoom and stuff like that. AI can do a better job of creating form documents than your paralegal can. And they'll fix more of the errors and it's easier to improve and you have to pay it less over time. So it, yeah, that's coming, especially for uh, the law firm structure and the paralegal structure. I think that is something that is coming in the future. Now you'll still need people to do physical things, but they'll need to be more like a clerk, you know, like somebody who's dealing with physical documentation other stuff like that. But the pyramid is going to definitely change also regarding research. So it was signed by all the parties. So she cannot say that she did not agree to those terms. She, in fact, did agree to the terms. Now, let's get into the text messages. This is what I like. I love text messages. So let's get into what Sydney said here. This is a text with Sydney. Read the top. I've already talked to Elijah. Please give me a heads up if your instinct are ever telling you the guest is a bad fit. So this is the CEO texting Sydney. Hey, look, if you don't like the guest, just tell me. Just tell me. Just talk to me, girl. And look at her response. Usually, when I think it's a horrible idea, I say no right out of the gate. She's a strong, independent woman. She just says no right out of the gate. And Brandon typically does not book them. So Brandon just automatically falls in line with the queen and does not book. I let the Nick thing slide, and I'm glad to an extent. And I'm glad we did it to an extent. So she's saying that she is happy, at least partially, right? Maybe not fully, but at least partially happy that they did that. And yes, Ty, I do agree that the CEO simping out in a text message is dumb, but this is, by the way, what happens for women versus men. A man would never get this type of text message. Would a man ever get this type of I don't think so. That's a good point. That's a very good point that the CEO should not have been texting her like this, but this is what happens. This is where we're at. So my audience was deeply upset. My audience was deeply upset and asked us to never have him on again. Well, that's part of it, right? Didn't you want outrage? Don't you want on leftists? Don't you, didn't you want to book leftists because you didn't want to agree all the time because you wanted people that would piss your audience off, that get them fired up? And frankly, I'm happy to oblige. I actually didn't mind the woman haters. So she's saying, so hold on right here. She's saying, that I actually don't mind the woman haters. So she doesn't mind the misogyny. She's, she's, she's saying that. But his whole audience is what makes the whole uh, experience so horrible. They're a swarm of demons. 100%. So he just says 100%. He just agrees with, with her. And it says, like I said, shoot down bad ideas with good ideas. Half the issue is we try to hide undesirable views rather than pulling them into the light and seeing them for what they are. I let the Nick thing slide, and I'm glad we did it to an extent. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, sorry. So there's 100%. Uh, and then he says again, after saying, half the issue is we try to hide undesirable ideas rather than pulling them into the light and seeing them for what they are. Agree 100%. Okay. He hearts her message. I'm going to say, by the way, yeah, this is this is the the, the trad con simping. You know, and I know that CEO is a trad con. This is the problem with trad cons is their their weak spot is women, and they'll admit it to you. They just they see a lady and they they put on the fedora and they go on and they tip it a little bit. You know, like my lady, but then the the you know they get screwed. And he says, "Sorry about this one, Tyler. It was uh, it was tried never again. Trust that I am out here doing hardcore vetoes when I think someone is a fuckwit." By the way, does a traditional woman use the word fuckwit? Just does just, just traditional conservative, are they using the word fuckwit? Anyways, um, so that's that's the text message. This is the, this is the proof. I mean, it proves two things. The CEO is guilty of uh, incredibly high estrogen levels, and he needs to get his testosterone checked. So, so uh, Tyler 
please go in for your testosterone shot. You probably need it. You're probably cruising in the hundreds. You're like three X a woman. You got to get those bad boys up 700, 800, 900. Let, let, let's pump your numbers up. Those are rookie numbers. We're going to need to get those testosterone levels up, brother. But this is not how you, you deal with this. So let's continue here. This is her bookings, what she booked. Sydney Watson right here. Look at this. Sydney Watson, 2.17 p.m., October 4th. This is what she added. Calls to be booked. Eliza Blue. Eliza Blue. We got a blue sighting. We got a blue off the port bow. We got another grifter. We got one spotted. Actually, I don't know most of the rest of these guys. So I don't know who David Rabot is. Malcolm Flex, Austin Peterson, Jackie Daly, Brandy Love. Is it wasn't Brandy Love a porn star? Am I wrong about that? Anyways. Um, and then Jack Murphy. She put in Jack Murphy and Blue. Well, honestly, we nobody's talking about Blue. We need to we need to talk about the fact that like she, like Sydney Watson is the one who's booking the grifters here. She's got the double grifter on the list. Holy shit. Jack and Eliza were the ones put on the list by Sydney. And yet she's the one who complains. Are you fucking kidding me? A whole heap of grifters. I got to do my due diligence on the rest of these guys. In fact, I just got to Google like, who the fuck is fuck is this dude okay all right so we got like a martial artist on here um yeah i know i know brandy love actually shit i gotta google the porn star all right you know it's brandy love all right oh uh, okay i know her i think she's the one that that um came out as being conservative and she's yeah she's pro desantis uh of course we got it we got so this is brandy love right here right she's got some some lovely some lovely assets in your, your 40 plus, 40 and plus category. Of course, very traditional conservative guess. Very traditional conservative guess. Crazy. <laughs> you know, the conservatives that do porn, you know, because that's totally a conservative thing. Yeah. Oh, it's sorry. Did I did I not have that when I pulled up Brandy Love's photos? In case anybody didn't know, because we gotta we gotta we gotta make sure that the kids at home. Uh, by the way, we're about to get demonetized for this. So if you guys do me a favor, uh, right now we are at uh, what the we're only at five hundred likes. Can, can somebody talk? Can we can we get to like seven hundred likes for this? If I'm gonna get demonetized for showing you guys who this uh, porn conservative who Sydney wanted a book is. Uh, you know, let's, let's get up. Let's get those likes up. Let's get those likes up. As Kevin Samuels would say, RIP, RIP King. Let's see where we're at. Okay. We got it up. We're almost at 600. All right. All right. I'll get, I'll get canceled for 600. So here you go. This is Brandy Love. Your 40 plus kind of mid tier here. Look, uh, I'm tall. I'm one tall. And lean dick fucking machine. That is that is Brandy Love's quote there. Now listen, no judgment here passed, but I'm just saying if she's trying to say I'm this, I'm this, I'm this effeminate traditional conservative, and I'm so afraid of sexual topics and talking about penises. Well, are you gonna be talking about penises with the dick fucking machine? Are you going to be, are you going to be avoiding that topic? Or is that going to be something that, you know, might be a little bit in and out? Yeah, certainly not a conservative. Yeah, neither. I don't know Brandy and I don't know political positions, whatever. But I mean, Sydney is, is definitely not painting herself as a conservative through this. All right, let's continue. In the exhibits, we got more evidence, boys. We got more.
text messages. Let's go. So I'm worried we can't sustain this. I really want some leftists on or people we don't agree with. The same, 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 agree, agree, agree stuff is a bit ZZZ. So here's why this is so poignant. This is poignant because Sydney is trying to say that people that are mean to her and people that say mean things are a cause for her to sue the blaze. But yet she wants to get in fights. She wants to talk to people she disagrees with because she disagrees with Nick Fuentes and Jack Murphy is no different than disagreeing with the leftist. In fact, she'd probably secretly agree with the leftist because, hey, that's really what team she's on here. And yes, this is very, very, very critical because the woman continues to be within the movement. And these people, the Tommy Larens of the world, the Sydney Watsons of the world, they're trying to stay within them. They're trying to stay within conservative ink. This is what they want to push on you. They want to push these feminists to your daughters. These are the people they want to have propagandizing your daughters. Is this what you want? Is this your female role models you want? Tommy Lahren and Sidney Watson? No, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> I should book Brandy Love and Lisa Ann. Oh, that would be great. Yeehaw says, this is uh, Elijah Schaefer's group text with Sydney, right? So just touching base on the show and filling you in via Corey. Do we have time after? He leaves tonight even at 10 or 15 minutes. I'd love to get more time with him as possible. He has time, just leaves tonight at 8. He's coming to help fine-tune the studio a little bit, so he'll be there at 2. Sounds great, fam. Uh, getting great feedback, me too, about the whole show. So there, look at them. She's putting a fucking smiley heart face emoji. This is the disingenuousness of this woman. She's heart face emojiing with the little hearts around it. You guys have seen this one. By the way, men, do not use this emoji. Or you lose your card. She's heart face emojiing. Are these two people that are fighting? Is this a toxic work environment? Is this a hostile? Do you call people you hate fam? And say you're getting great feedback from a show that's so horrible? And so terrible? No, of course not. Oh, if I not. Oh, by the way, we're already we're already uh, we're already like halfway demonetized here, guys. So, thank you all for the support. Thank you all who've been throwing the super chats out. It's much appreciated. Oh, thank you, Leprechaun Gold. Appreciate you just in time. As we go yellow. I appreciate you. You guys are helping support me when the haters don't want me to talk about this. Uh, Metarax says, do you know that AI you speak of, like Chat GPT, is not artificial intelligence? It's algorithmic intel. Uh, do you know that domains are for sale that algorithm pulls from, and you can make those far right? Oh, interesting. Very interesting. But the point is, whatever the name is you call it, whether you call it algorithmic intel, if there is a solution that is cheaper than an employee, that will replace the employee, especially as we come towards recessionary periods and especially with dying economies where we have worker shortages, we are going to have AI or algorithmic intel or whatever it is, some software solution, replace employees. Because why bring on a Sydney Watson if I can make a VTuber, or better yet, just a complete artificial artificial uh, waifu that can do, be much more of a true Tradcon than Sidney Watson ever could. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, like Meme Copian says, it's all machine learning, but it's just a name and we all know what it means. We all know what it means. And can it replace people? It doesn't matter what it is. It can replace people. That's the point. Can it replace people? Yeah, we'll probably have to, we may have to make this one members only. We'll see. 
Depends how hard the, the Sydney Watson stands re. Because they're out there, by the way. The Sydney Simps are out there. They are gonna, they're gonna be salty. I guarantee. I guarantee. Um, all right. So any possibility to push this to tomorrow? Sorry, Tyler. We're all over the shop, the shop today. Should be fine. 4:30. Are you okay? So this is the CEO. Once again, this is the CEO asking if she's okay. And here's what she says. I'm actually doing great. Totally chalkers to work through, and I really need to hire someone to help, but a good problem to have. I thought last night's episode was pretty decent too, by the way, despite Elijah being stuck in South. So it shows that, hey, she's still happy throughout this process. Look at this. This is in literally May of 20 seconds. This is three months before she files the lawsuit. Actually, two and a half months before she files the lawsuit. And yes, I'll get back into this question because I think the CEO should not have been talking to her, but we'll, we'll get back into that. The Blaze and I are still connected and hopefully we can produce something awesome. Sometimes things don't go as planned, but that's life. So saying that everything is okay a mere couple months before that. And then boom, this declaration. This is Gaston Moody. This is the president of Blaze Media. And this is their text message, which is blown up to ungodly size. Definitely. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm questioning their emojis, but whatever. Okay. Hey. This is from, hey, not trying to bother or pressure, I promise. We just all need to connect to figure out contract adjustments and next step on the pod. We are still interested. Yeah, I'm not ignoring you, I promise. This is in June. This is a mere month and a half, two months before she filed her lawsuit. Just all over the place. Still want to see what y'all had in mind before any other meetings go down. Sorry to me to text you back in June before now, but we sure, we for sure... Want to have you as a contributor to content on the Blaze platform. Uh, regarding Sydney Pod and such, we wanted to follow your lead and be supportive. We can work with other specifics and don't want to override your contract vision. These guys at the Blaze are simping hard. They are bending over backwards for her. These guys are taking it six ways from Sunday for her. And this is the TradCon problem is they bend over backwards for these women. And what do they do? These manipulative, internalized feminists turn out to fuck them. They fuck them every single time. This is the problem. This is far beyond first wave feminine. This is this is this is the new school. This is the new school grift. And this is why you got to treat them like men, gentlemen. If they want to be treated like men, you need to really treat them like men. Really. Seriously. If they want to live in a world and they want to be big girls and boys where we're all treated equally, stop this bullshit simping and start treating them like men. Hold them to task. Hold them accountable. Hold them to contract terms. When they don't perform, this message should not be like, oh, we'll do what you want. It's like, you know you're in breach of contract right now. And we have, and we have no duty to alter your contract. In fact, we're going to terminate your contract right now. You need to hold them accountable. Stop the corporate simping. The time is over. I'm sorry, big con. You don't get a pass on this one either. And people who say I'm light on the blaze, this is me busting the blaze's balls from a corporate attorney standpoint. Because guess what? These motherfuckers did not have me as their attorney. And if I was in there, I don't care if there's six other trad con attorneys. I'm standing up and saying you guys are being a bunch of fucking simps. Get your balls together and stop treating her like she's some sort of gentle little angel. This is a demon packed inside a package, a feminist package. You're just letting it, you're literally letting it get its way. So, <laughs> Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> All right. So anyways, let's talk about this. The merch. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. How, how many of you guys have seen this merch? 
It, honestly, I will say one thing nice about Sydney here. I've been really mean. Let me be nice to Sydney. First of all, let me say two things about Sydney that are nice. First of all, I actually don't have a problem with tall women. I actually find tall women quite attractive. I think tall women are very sexy. And I have never had a problem with I'm 6'6", six, six, so I do appreciate tall women. Tall women are great. And I have no problem with women because of their height. Uh, in fact, slay tall queens. It's great. Second of all, I actually think this merchant, this merch is actually pretty good. And I think this merch is actually pretty cute. I actually like her merch. I actually think this is really good merch. This is solid merch. And honestly, it's very fairly priced. I think it's very fairly priced. And I, I think it's solid merch. The 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 rooster instead of a like the, the hen there, the clock instead of cock, that's actually kind of funny. You know? It's actually pretty good here. So yeah, but here's the problem. If you're so butthurt, you can't have merch like this. <laughs> you can't have merch like this. You can't be selling and profiting off a of merch as of today. And and you know, just so you guys see, so you confirm, right? That she's had this merch up. So you've got that proof. No booty shorts. Well, it's almost as this lawsuit is just a shakedown. Yes, it is. And that's, by the way, what many of these lawsuits are. What I think happened is she spoke to the attorneys and they said, oh, we'll simp for you, queen. Once again, you know, trad con. We'll simp for you, queen, and we can shake these guys down. This is an easy lawsuit. It's a layup. We win all the time. By the way, the last exhibit on this is arbitration rules, which once again, we go back to this is presumptively subject to arbitration. So there we go. So all that evidence we see today, to me, leads me to believe that Sidney Watson's case is absolute garbage. It's a travesty, and all it's done is expose her. It's exposed her to be the Alan Bragg of conservative women. She's out here attacking not just not just the idea, not just the blaze, right? But this idea that men and women can even work together. Lawsuits like Sidney Watson's are going to make it so that you have to have entirely gender segregated workplaces. By the way, in a lot of highly um, equal equal countries, right, equalitarian, whatever, equity countries like the Nordic countries, there's heavy gender segregation by occupation. And that may be the way we just end up happening. Society just ends up self-sorting that we go, men go over here and women go over here. We're already seeing it with men entering the trades at a record number and abandoning in mass university. Just saying, fuck university. Why do I need university? None of the jobs I'm doing or the things I'd be doing require that. I can just learn the skill. I can just get educated. You know, as a, <laughs> what was that? What was the Mark Twain quote? Don't let your learning get in the way. Of, don't let your schooling get in the way of your education. That's the Mark Twain quote. Great quote, by the way. But yeah, uni absolutely getting exposed as a, as a scam. So that's what I got on Sydney Watson. I will stay posted on this one. You better believe your boy legal mindset is going to continue to hold Sydney Watson to task. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And make sure you guys are liking this stream. We got up to, we're like, gosh, we're 20 away. We're almost there at 700. Uh, let me make sure I got all the comments here and also all the memes. So Rouchers on rumble had a five dollar rumble rant saying kid rock dropped bud did you see his video where he's shooting some bud with a full auto mp5 if yeah i have not seen that and i would play it if i wouldn't get in trouble on youtube more than i probably already get that's great though that's freaking great but i mean look i think these economic by the way don't let the liberals tell you they don't work 
These boycotts do work. They absolutely do work. And Gillette it has felt that, has certainly felt that boycott. You know, remember Gillette with their toxic masculinity, they felt that. So that will work with Bud Light. They do feel the economics. And that's where we got to hit them. We got to hit them in the wallet. The Disneys, the Bud Lights, the Gillettes, you got to hit them in their wallet. You got to say enough is enough. I am canceling this. I am canceling my Disney Plus. I'm canceling my annual pass. You've got to do it. That's what they actually pay attention to. And that's how they change. Because especially as we go into troubled economic times, and as we have troubled economic times, they start looking at those things and reconsidering. CLS, thank you for the $5 tip on locals. Appreciate y'all over there. Um, and appreciate, by the way, all the all of the mad memes. This is a good one. Uh, this is a good one. Of course, Biden is not cut like that. I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, Libertarian podcast review says, what does it say about Kurt Schlichter for filing this garbage lawsuit? Honestly, um, I like a lot of Kurt's tweets, but I think that Kurt is a trad con. And I think that the that honestly, guys, I, I'm being serious with you, and the ladies will back me up on this. In fact, I saw I saw Radix in the chat earlier, and I've seen a lot of my ladies who back me up who've been here. The weakness for traditional conservatives is women. It's always women. It's always women. That's their that's the problem, is that they just they just automatically bend the knee. That is the problem with them. And they got to stop that deference because we do not live in a world where you can give women that deference anymore. Legally, you can't do it. It's not sustainable as a corporation. You have to treat them in America like men. And I know that goes against your ethos or whatever else, but frankly, even the conservative ones, you got to treat them exactly like you treat men. It's the Achilles heel and you got to see it and you got to get away from it. That's the world that there that exists. We can say we wanted to go back to 1950s or whatever. Okay, trad cons, let's let's say you want that world. We're not in that world. Regardless of whether you want that world, we're not in that world. We're living in reality. You got to get your shit together. And the blaze, big con, big conservative is controlled by the traditional conservatives, by the very traditional conservatives. They don't get it. They're, they're, they're learning this now. They're learning it the hard way. And I hope that this lawsuit teaches them. And, and from now on, they treat everybody the same. They treat all women, all men equally. I hope they do that. I hope they do that from a corporate standpoint. And by the way, Blaze, if you want to consult with me, if you want some legal consultation services, hit me up. I'm happy to consult with you. My, my, my door is open to consultation, Blaze. It's what I do. I'm happy to give advice. I give good advice. Ask BB. <laughs> What's up, BB? Good to see you. Someone I used to work with. But yeah, Na look at Nancy. Says it right here. Couldn't agree more. Female. By the way, Nancy, I got to have you on. We got to have a good conversation one day about this stuff because we always have good conversations in locals. And if you want other good conversations, come into my legal mindset.locals.com and check that out. James says boycotts work. Like Gecko said, it's all about the bucks, kid. The rest is just conversation. Absolutely. Oh yeah, we can play that. We can play the toxic masculinity one. Let's play that. I want. I want to. I want to show you guys this. What Gillette did and why I still do not buy Gillette razors. Let's let's watch this. This is very important for you guys to to see. If you haven't seen this already, I, I think this was the moment in which they jumped the shark. And we, we won't even play all of it. I'll just play a little bit of it. Uh, you know, like half of it. Bullying. The Me Too the movement against sexual toxic harassment. Masculinity. Is this the best a man can get? Is it? We can't hide from it. It's been going on far too long. We can't laugh at all. By the way, so I just want to, I want to, I want to go into some parts here that I'm just going to debunk. Number one, saying that Guys are chasing other boys through the streets, like through movie theaters. Okay. Also, this type of text message harassment, this is actually much more common amongst females than males, in fact. So let's just let's just point that out there real for a second while we while we do this. We can't laugh at all. So 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 oh yes, that was so toxic that. 
That 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 was so that was so toxic. <laughs> what I actually think she's trying to say. Making the same old excuse. Oh 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 yeah that there you go yeah yeah yeah. Use it. Because that happens all the time. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. But something boys. finally changed. Allegations regarding sexual assault and sexual. And so once again, this shows you who they allied with. Anna Kasparian, right? Tyt. Once again, it, it was it was very clear what their political affiliation was. And there will be no going back. This is this is Gillette. Because we we believe in the best in men. Men need to hold other men. Oh, Terry Crews. Oh, Terry Crews. Of course, yes, yes. The the epitome of masculinity here, Terry. Smile, sweetie. Come on. To say the right thing, to act the right uh, way. Bro, not cool. Not cool. So, so, so it's so so it's not cool to approach women in public. So it's not women to see. This is the thing. When women say, "You get where's where's Megan Fox, uh, <laughs> Megan Fox reporter, not Megan Fox." But remember, it's like she's like, "Well, why don't guys talk to you in public?" It's because of this. What is this? So so you think a guy who sees a girl and is going to go say something to her that that's not cool anymore? This was this was why this is so this this whole ad was just like thing after thing after thing. Not cool. Not cool. Some already are. In ways big. Yo, men. And small. I am strong. I am strong. But because before this, before this, you know, men were just mean to their daughters, right? But why does the daughter have to be strong? That's the other thing too. And like, what is strength? Is it mental strength? Is it physical strength? Yeah, let's let's continue. But some. So wait, hold on, hold on. So so tussling on the ground is now problematic, anyways. Is not enough. It's not how we treat each other, okay? Okay. Because the boys watching today will be the men of tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, that was the commercial from Gillette. That was a razor commercial. That's a razor commercial. So if you guys hadn't seen that, that caused a boycott. And if you hadn't boycotted them before, you're welcome now. Um, and they, they've never retracted that. That commercial came out years ago. They never corrected that. They never retracted that. They never made a statement. And frankly, look, if, if these corporations are willing to come back and apologize and bend the knee, then maybe I'll think about it. But... The Bud Lights of the world, the Imbevs, uh, the the Tranheiser Bushes, you know, the Disneys, they've they've lost my money. Period. End of story. It's over. That being said, guys, let me get these super chats. Uh, her selfies say it all. In love with herself and has the quartering on a leash. Total War Department energy. I actually haven't looked at Sydney Watson's Instagram, so let's actually look at that. Um, and you can tell a lot by, uh, the, their, um, by their Instagram, but yeah, I mean, once again, it, you know, you look at it, what are you marketing? Are you marketing the message or are you marketing yourself? Right. And is this about, is this about politics or is this about herself? And there's a certain amount of personal marketing, right. To anybody's Instagram, but yeah, of course she's got all the selfies, right. She's got all the selfies here. And let me not say, let me just say this. I think Sydney Watson is a decently attractive woman, right? She's not unattractive. She's not completely unattractive because the thing I have to give for all Western women is, is that, hey, if you're not obese, you get some points. So actually I'll give that to Sid. I will give that to him. But when you transition into a world, by the way, when you watch your feed and if you scroll down there going from more politics and memes to pictures of yourself and that's the transition and you watch that you see like okay that's the transition into the narcissism or solipsism that's another thing you can see that kind of where people were they'll they'll transition one way and clearly that's another phase of her life. Also, clearly she's getting older, which is that point at which you hit the mythical wall, which is always something mental, never something physical. And it's just a, that period of the life. 
Can people uh, of the alphabet community see that corporations do this only to make money off you? Yes, these corporations don't actually care about you. This is all marketing. Yes, that's exactly it. These corporations put up the pink flag. They put up the, the sorry, the pink ribbon for breast cancer month. They put up the BLM fist or whatever the fuck it is uh, during Black Black History Month, whatever they'll put up. They'll put up the rainbow flag during Pride Month. It's all a grift. It's all marketing. They don't give, they, some of them, most of them don't actually truly give a shit. And by the way, if you boycotted every single company that, you know, did some of these things, you'd actually end up boycotting entire industries that might make it difficult to survive, which is how deeply this is penetrated. But this should be offensive to those groups themselves. I think those groups themselves, I think the even the, the LGBTQ community should be offended that it's just a thing for them. It's just, it's just a month of marketing. And let's be honest, the, the issues are going to start dividing that community. Increasingly, people in the gay and lesbian community are getting red-pilled. You know what was a turning point for me? When I saw regular normal people that kind of know my beliefs, they know my, um, they know my mindset, my legal mindset, and they started forwarding me uh, reels by Gays Against Groomers. If you guys don't know, Gays Against Groomers was banned under the Dorsey regime and brought back under Elon on Twitter. And these are gays who are anti, well, grooming, anti the map stuff, anti the insanity. And they're getting red-pilled. They are getting red-pilled fast. Lesbians getting red-pilled fast because they're being left behind in the woke pyramid. They're, 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 you know, especially white gay men are treated like white men that overpowers that G category. So they're pushed over there into that. So they're increasingly getting red pilled and they're increasingly coming over and finding these spaces. And this is the fall of the, of the left really is that they, their whole camp really has adverse interests. Uh, doesn't this show a bias against Eliza by the CEO? Yeah, I mean, Eliza might have grounds to sue. But first of all, he's a man, and he's probably not going to complain about it. He's probably going to suck it up. Despite what I say about Elijah, he's shown more fortitude towards this and about this and more self-control than I would expect, especially of men this generation. But yes, there was a there was def. I guarantee you, look, check Tyler's text messages. There is no way that man was texting Elijah like that. No way. There's no way. Check the text. And, and Tyler, if you're listening to this, which I hope you are, take your text messages out with Elijah and Sydney. Put them side by side. Look at the difference. Now, every female content creator that you work with as an independent contractor, buddy, make sure, you, make sure they're sure about that. Speak to them like the Elijah text, not like the Sydney text. And don't do it again. Never again. Now, we all make mistakes, but we learn from them, okay? At one point, I voted for Obama, right? I was a, At one point, I was a registered Democrat and voted for Obama. Yeah, I fixed that. I fixed that real quick. We all make mistakes. I've made mistakes, okay? Got to fix them. Got to move forward, buddy. All right. The Gillette commercial was 100% written by a woman. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, and, and her, but also remember... Those type of commercials have tons of males that are checking them. But what they are doing is they are simping for them and they're just rubber stamping, rubber stamping, green stamping, green stamping. Oh, that's great. That's terrible. Agree 100%. What happened to that Gillette commercial was exactly the same thing that happened to Sydney Watson. Did you guys see that? 100% heart emoji. That's what they did to the Gillette commercial. When you say, how did this air? It's because a bunch of men said 100% heart emoji on the Gillette commercial. That's how that happened. It's something that both conservatives and liberal men are both guilty of. Both camps are guilty of it. Also, what's up, Camelot? Shout out to the fight melt. Good to see you in the house, brother. Good to see you in the house. 
dropping that mad fight melt. Until though, until tomorrow, guys. Tomorrow, I think I'm gonna do my world news report, and then I'm gonna have Reedy Draws on on Thursday. We're gonna have a really cool conversation about Asia, about comics, about women done the right way uh, in comics, in media. I think that should be really fun. That's actually one I'm gonna look forward to. I also had Joe Ball hit me up. I may have him on. He's another comics guy. I may have him on next week as well. Um, so I've got some good, good, fun ones coming up. Uh, but yeah, tomorrow we're going to do World News at 7 p.m. So I'll be collecting that for you, kind of doing your World News report with Asian reporter Trisha Takanawa. Now, Andrew. Um, so we'll be going over that tomorrow and then getting into that on Thursday. So that being said, guys, I'll catch you later. Stay based.